If I create a video because of your comment, I'll give you a shout out. So be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. Today I'm going to be going over how to properly attach wires to a DC motor. So we have a motor here, some heat shrink tubing, and two wires. All right, the first step we're going to go through is properly setting up the wires. All right, so I have just two basic wires that I cut off of uh, this set here that I got off at Amazon for, I think it was $16, and there's 23 feet of six different colors. Uh, this has a silicone casing, which I'm not sure I'm a big fan of yet. Um, I do like that it's more pliable. Uh, however, it seems to be harder to cut the insulation off um, because I have to really press down on the, uh, the wire cutters in order to get through the insulation. Uh, because there's more give in the silicone than, than there is in plastic. Um, but the first step here would be to trim down the wires. And the first thing I would do is I would cut down about half, about half an inch. Okay, and when you clamp down, you want to clamp, and instead of actually spinning the tool or, or spinning the wire while it's clamped down, turn the wire and then clamp down again. And if you, if you want, you can maybe do it one more time. And what you'll see is there, it broke through the insulation, but it might not make a complete cut through. So I just stick my fingernail in there and I pull it. And then you can see that I've broken through and completed the rest. Uh, the reason is because if you, if you use the wrong size, so you're going too tight, um, or if you try to score it, then you could end, end up taking off some of the strands of wire down underneath and that's actually not a good thing. So you want to keep all those strands of wire intact. So at this point you can either pull it straight off or what I like to do is sometimes yeah see this has got a little connection here that's there we go. Uh, another thing you can do is as you pull it off twist and that'll give your wire a nice twist to it. Um, I always go back over it anyway just to make sure it's a nice even twist and what you're looking for is just that all the strands are nicely twisted together. Okay, I will do that for the rest of the four ends and then we'll get back to uh, the next step. Okay, um, just to show you example, an example of uh, what would happen if you went down too tight. Okay, I'm going to clamp this, even doing it the way that I had mentioned previously. So now if I pull this off, yeah, you can see a couple strands. There's one strand very obviously sticking out. Um, there's another strand, you can't see it, but it's inside the insulation there. Um, so now I have two cut strands on this, which means I'm getting less conductivity than I would normally get, and less... Um, less force when I'm attaching this to a contact. Okay, and now um, you could, I guess if you wanted to, you could just stick this right in here and start soldering. Uh, I solder them first, so it's called tinning, wire tinning, and what that is going to do is it's going to take these strands and it's going to make them all into almost a solid core wire. And what I do to do that is make sure your strands are all nice and close-knit, spun together like that. Take a clean soldering iron. I add a little dab of solder to it, which uh, what this does is it creates a nice contact, so because liquid transfers heat better than uh, no liquid. So I put that on the bottom of the wire, and then on the top you just keep tapping it until your solder begins to melt. It'll begin to melt once the wire is hot enough to melt that solder. So that's why you put the soldering iron on the bottom and then the solder on the top. That way you won't be trying to tin your wire until it's absolutely hot enough to do it. Okay, and so as you can see, as I spin, you can still see the strands of wire. But this is one nice solid piece. Okay, and that's what you want. And you also want to try to get it so that the solder doesn't go underneath the insulation. And you also don't want to put the um, put too much heat on it 
so that it ends up melting the insulation. Uh, it takes some practice, but you know, wire is cheap, so it's easy to practice. I'll continue that for the remainder of these wires. Okay. And what I like to do as well is I like to cut off the ends of these just because sometimes uh, the end is a little more open. It's not as tight, tightly bound. Um, so I just cut off the end to give these a nice clean end. All right. And now at this point, um, we have two options here. So the proper way to attach these to our motor would be to take this Take a pair of needle nose pliers and then put a bend in this to make a J hook. Okay, like that. And what that does is when you put this in here, make sure we put it on the right side. So the red one, whoop, the red one here is uh, the positive and then the ground here. It, it doesn't necessarily matter, um, but when you're hooking up your circuit and you have a, bu a bunch of motors and you want to hook them up all, all the same way, then it helps to know that all the negatives are on the negatives and all the positives are on the positives. But they are, um, you can apply voltage to either end, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so in this example, I will use the J hook. Trying to get a good video feed on this, uh, so it's kind of in a bad position for me to solder this, but I'll do my best. And again, with anything that we solder, we want to make sure that we touch the, the soldering tip to both the wire and the pad that we're soldering to. And we want it just long enough so that it, you can see it flow nicely. Uh, when you pull it off, it's nice and shiny, so we know we didn't get a cold solder joint. And it's encasing um, the entire pad and the wire. Okay, I don't like doing it this way um, only because if you have an issue where you need to take this wire off because a lot of times this will snap at this point here. So if you need to take that wire off then desoldering this and trying to pull a wire that's curved around this loop is very difficult. So what I actually like to do is I like to just stick it through as a straight, um, I might shorten this a little bit for this case because we're not bending it in half. So what I like to do is just stick it in there like this. So now it's just stuck in there straight. Okay. All right, I'm back and finally got this thing to cooperate a little bit. So then I'm gonna put the solder on here. And another thing I wanna mention is when you're putting these on, you wanna make sure you don't leave the, the solder on there or the soldering iron on there too long. Um, otherwise, you can see that there's plastic around these uh, metal pins and what will happen is that pin will actually slide in and out and there's an actuator inside that's attached to the motor so you can damage your motor if you leave uh, the soldering iron on here too long and allow the actuator to move. Okay the next step to finishing our motor is um, we could leave it off here but I guarantee you that in you know in a couple days or a couple weeks use you're going to end up wiggling this wire so much that it's going to end up breaking off right where the solder meets the stranded wire. Um, and so you can pick up this uh, kit right here like this. It's uh, $8.99 I think on Amazon and it's like 360 pieces in like nine different sizes. 
So it should be everything you'd ever need for quite a long time. Um, sometimes what, what you'll see is that you'll have this contact and it'll be so big that the insulation that nicely fits over the, uh, the wire itself won't actually go over the whole contact. Uh, in this case, I don't have that issue, but if I did, then I would put the next biggest size of heat shrink for the wire onto the wire itself to make the wire a little bit thicker. And then after I heated that up, I would put this bigger piece down. It would go over that black wire and then it would fit over the contact. Now, like I said, this black wire or this black heat shrink does fit over the contact and the wire. So I, I'll be good with just using this. Okay, just like that. And you can use a hair dryer. Um, some people use a lighter. I don't, I mean, if you use a typical Bic lighter, then it's gonna leave black soot all over it. It's gonna get kind of gross and, and you might actually melt it and damage it. Um, a hair dryer works. Uh, sometimes you can use a torch lighter if, if it comes down to it. Um, but a hair dryer would be best if you don't have a heat gun. Um, I don't recall how much I picked this up for. It was probably, 15, 20 bucks at the most. Um, it's just a one speed heater. Um, but you know, it does a job. So what I like to do is I turn on the, the heater and then I'll, once it's heated up, I'll heat one side and then I'll heat the other side. Okay. And I'll try to get some video of it actually shrinking to show you. Okay, so you can see that shrunk up pretty nice. Um, it actually conforms to the shape of the, the uh, contact there. Now, that's pretty good. It's a lot better than it was. Um, you know, I could just for safety's sake, I'll add this just for some rigidity. That'll, this'll really make sure that the, uh, the motor wires don't, they don't loosen up. So I'll slide this over like that. I'll slide this one over like this. And I'll just repeat that same process. All right, this actually shows a pretty good example of what I was just talking about. So you can see this, this heat shrinking it just barely comes down to where the wire is on this side. On this side, I actually have some of the black um, heat shrink sticking out, so you can see it, it's stuck right to it. Okay, so now that I have that second layer, I mean, this thing is super rigid, and that thing's not coming off anytime soon. Okay, um, and this is, this is what you'd wanna do for your DC motors. These, this is the, the proper way to solder it on, um, either using the J-hook or just using the straight method. Either one's worked fine for me. I haven't noticed a, a difference as far as uh, performance or longevity. So just use whichever one you're more comfortable with. I would suggest the straight just because it's easier to replace if you ever do need to. And you do commonly need to replace these because um, they, you know, if you're plugging it into different circuits, uh, then there's a high chance that it'll end up breaking. If you're just going to plug it in and leave it, then, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.